All right, so here we have uh, the second lecture in the, the hero's journey, and here the journey begins. So we have the call to adventure and the meeting with the mentor. So here we have the beginning of the hero's journey. Uh, up until this point, our potential hero has been living happily and mostly ignorantly in her ordinary world. Uh, she or he is usually not the best person, as we see, as we will see with Gilgamesh. Uh, he tends to be selfish and self-centered, and he's uncaring about the negative consequences his actions have on those around him. Then, however, the hero receives this call to adventure. Now, this call can come from an actual person, or it can come about because of some event that has occurred. So when you're reading Gilgamesh, ask yourself, what calls Gilgamesh to adventure? What is the reason for him taking his journey? Now, this call may be to pursue life to its fullest. So that may be what the adventure is, is, is to get carpe diem, to grab the day. Or if the call tends to come later in life, it's a call for the person to face and accept death because they're coming near death. Uh, or it can be a call to accept a historical undertaking, uh, such as we may see with Achilles, uh, to, to go on an, a military endeavor. And finally, what it can be is to undergo a religious journey uh, that results in the awakening of the true self, the complete human being. Now, Joseph Campbell tends to feel that these all will eventually end up being uh, these somewhat spiritual journeys uh, where a person is called to transfigure themselves, to go undergo a transfiguration, a shedding of the old life patterns and the old self-centered personality to a more rounded, less selfish, more mature personality. And this is why Campbell believes these myths and these stories exist, uh, to give us guides for that. All right, so the call also, though, can be a cause of anxiety because it is asking us to delve deep into the unconscious, the unknown, which is always somewhat scary. And you're also asking somebody in the actual stories to go on this, this dangerous, somewhat precarious uh, adventure where uh, they may come to harm. Uh, so examples of this is, is Eve being uh, asked to leave the Garden of Eden, go out into the wider world. Buddha, after sitting under the Bodhi tree, going past the horizons of this world and breaking the veil that hides the real world from us. All right, so this is stepping over the threshold I spoke of in the first Hero's Journey lecture, uh, of moving from the ordinary world into the, into the special world. So when you're reading Gilgamesh, try to see where does this happen. Where does he move from the ordinary world and over this threshold? Now, the archetypal, the common shared images we see in stories uh, tend to symbolize danger. And it's a trial or a passage of some sort. And this is brought by a herald or messenger. And since it's dangerous, the herald or messenger may be seen uh, very often as, as being a scary character in the story, uh, not somebody that you want to come up against. Now, what the call is signifying is that destiny is summoning the hero and taking her spiritual center away from the laws and boundaries of ordinary society to some strange place. That's what this call is, is calling for. Uh, now, this strange place is normally represented by a distant land. So uh, for Dorothy, it's Oz in The Wizard of Oz. Uh, for King Arthur, when he's going for the Holy Grail, it's a forest, a deep, dark, scary forest. Or, in many stories, it's a kingdom underground. So that's true for Gilgamesh. Many of the Greek and Roman mythological heroes also have to go underground uh, for, the, for the Greeks to Hades, uh, where a lot of these, these journeys uh, end up. Now, many times, what may happen, because this is a scary journey, uh, the hero may refuse the calls uh, and say, no, I'm not taking this trip. Uh, I'm going to die. It doesn't sound like a good thing to do. Uh, and what happens here now, you now have the adventure becoming its negative. So instead of all the, the benefits that can come from going on the journey, what happens is the hero's world, the hero's world may become one of boredom, may end up with a life of nothing but hard work, and the hero now becomes a mundane human incapable of a significant action uh, who m may not be able to save himself or herself from this mundane world. And so all the hero can now do is create new problems for himself and wait for the disintegration of this world. And hopefully another call comes. 
Now, myths and folk tales show us that this refusal is a refusal to give up one's self-interest, a holding and a holding to the belief that one's present state, spiritual, psychological, physical, is fixed and unchanging. So the idea that things just stay how they are is an erroneous view of the world. Everything changes at all times. I mean, since you've been listening to this lecture, so many cells in your body have died and, be re and new cells have been regenerated. So even you have changed in the few minutes you've been sitting here. Everything does change and, and a, an unwillingness to accept the fact that everything changes it tends to be this refusal. Now, if the call is not refused and the hero begins the journey, then she more than likely will encounter a protective figure, the mentor. Uh, in fairy tales, this tends to be an old crone or an old man. A protector can be all sorts of different types of, uh, of entities. Uh, the protector will then provide amulets or other magical trinkets that can come in handy further down the road on the trip and can protect the hero from dangers she may encounter. Uh, with Gilgamesh, he does encounter somebody and some magic amulets and, and keep an eye out what he actually does with them. Now, the various protective figures we see are the fairy tale godmother in fairy tales. So a lot of times that's the protective figure. Uh, for Christian saints, the Virgin Mary is the protective figure. And Campbell says once the hero is under the protection of what he calls the cosmic mother, whatever form the cosmic mother takes, the hero cannot be harmed. All right, and so now they're on the journey and hopefully cannot be harmed because of this protection of the mentor. All right, so that's the call to a church. Uh, the next lecture, we will deal with crossing the threshold and entering the special world.